This video is going to transition us from lung physio to lung pathology. So basic lung physio, you take a deep breath in, take a deep breath out. Doesn't get more rudimentary than that. So take a deep breath in, take a deep breath out. Let's try and make it a little bit more confusing. So some terminology that I want you to know is compliance and elasticity. Compliance and elasticity. When you take a deep breath in, your alveoli will expand. Expand. Then we say your alveoli are like a rubber band so they can expand and then they can kind of recoil. So when they expand, expand, we call that compliance. And then when you take a deep breath out, your alveoli will kind of recoil, recoil. We call that elasticity. And so compliance is the expansion, so it's kind of like a inspiratory term when you're taking a deep breath in. And elasticity is when you recoil. So it's kind of like an expiratory term when you're taking a deep breath out. So just keep that terminology locked in the back of your mind, okay? Um, we're gonna move on to measuring our, our, I guess our lung health. One of the easiest ways to measure our lung health is just to ask the patient to take a deep breath in, take a deep breath out, all right? And if there's kind of changes in that, we kind of know it's okay, maybe their lungs aren't working as well as they should. So you just take, tell the patient, just breathe as you normally would. So in, out, in, out. So this we call our tidal volume. This is just normal breathing. Usually about 500 milliliters of air. Okay. Now we'll do this together. On your third breath of normal breathing, I want you to take an extra deep breath in. So we'll breathe. All right, so even when you take a normal breath, there's still an ability to take a extra deep breath in. There's still like this little reserve we have. We call this our inspiratory reserve volume. Inspiratory reserve volume. And you can also do that with expiration, yeah? So on our third breath, third normal breath, we'll take an extra breath out. So, ready? So even with a normal deep breath out, you can take an extra deep breath out. We call this our expiratory reserve volume. And something you should know, even when you take the deepest breath out you can, even when you think there's no more air left in your lungs, there still is. There's still a little bit of residual air in your lungs and that's important because that kind of keeps our alveoli open. This you cannot get rid of no matter how hard you breathe out. <sighs> even when you think there's no more oxygen in your lungs, there's still some re residual volume. So even when you think there's not, there's still some residual volume, okay? So those are our four values. That's just um, a measurement of whether or not we can take a normal breath in, normal breath out, okay? Those are our four values. Let's kind of draw them out together so they're not all on different charts. So we said you have normal breathing and then you can take an extra deep breath in. You can also take an extra deep breath out. And then we said there's a little bit at the bottom that you can never truly breathe out. All right, so our normal breathing is our tidal volume. Tidal. Volume. Our extra deep breath in, we call our inspiratory reserve volume. Inspiratory reserve volume. Our extra deep breath out, we call our expiratory reserve volume. And then we say we have some residual air that you cannot, you just can't get rid of. We call that our residual volume. So those are our four terms of just regular breathing. Now we can combine some of these terms, and anytime we combine terms, we call that capacity values, capacity values. Anytime you see capacity, you know they're a combination of terms. There's something called inspiratory capacity, inspiratory capacity. What do you think adds together to make inspiratory capacity? Your tidal volume and your inspiratory reserve volume. So tidal volume plus your inspiratory reserve volume. And you can also have expiratory Capacity, expiratory capacity. What do you think adds together to make expiratory capacity? Be your tidal volume and your expiratory reserve volume. Tidal volume plus expiratory reserve volume. All right. 
And then we have something called vital capacity. What is vital to, the, vital to us in our day-to-day -day living? Um, what is vital to us? Well, in our day-to-day -day living, what we need to do is be able to take deep breaths in, deep breaths out, all right? So all three of these terms. Uh, residual volume, we can't really control. We don't even notice it is there, so it's not vital to us. So when we're talking about vital capacity, vital capacity, we're talking about tidal volume, inspiratory reserve volume, and expiratory reserve volume. Things that are vital to us. We're not thinking of reserve volume. But um, if they're feeling like it's, but if we feel like we're leaving it out, if we want all four of the gang to be together, then we call that total lung capacity. Total lung capacity. And it combines all four terms. Okay? Now, something important you should know, we said that in our normal day-to-day -day living, in our, our vital capacity, we should be able to take a deep breath in, take a deep breath out. Uh, another measurement of lung health is not only being able to take a deep breath in and taking a deep breath out, but also be able to forcefully do that forcefully be able to take a deep breath out. If you ask anyone with bad lungs to do that, they don't really do that well. If you ask like a 60 year old smoker that has been smoking all their life, take a deep breath out as hard as you can, they'll go, and they'll start coughing, you know, it'll be very difficult to them. And so not only do we like to measure whether or not you can breathe, but whether or not you can forcefully breathe. This we call our forced vital capacity. Whether or not you can forcefully breathe. So our force vital capacity. Okay. And the graph looks a little bit different. And take a deep breath in, and then you'll ask them to breathe out as fast and as forcefully as you can. And they will. And normally, in one second, you should be able to breathe out about 80% of the air. You should forcefully be able to expire about 80% of the air in one second. We call this forceful expiratory volume in one second, FEV1. And it should be about 80%. If there's any difference in that, then we m we're thinking, okay, there might be something wrong with the lungs. Okay. Another way to look at this is that FVC divided by FEV1 is 0 0.8. Again, just 80%. All right, you're able to expel, you're able to expel in one second what you breathe in about, about 80%, point, point 0.8, okay? So that's what that chart looks like. And so we have two different charts to measure our lung function. We have one that measures how much we can breathe in and out. Then we have one that measures how much we can forcefully breathe in and out. Now let's go back to our two terms. I didn't forget about these two terms. When you have lung pathologies, you can break it up into kind of two groups. You can have obstructive airway disease. And an obstructive airway disease gets its name because there's some sort of airway obstruction. Whether your airway is closing or whether there's some sort of like plug, you're not able to exhale. You're not able to breathe out. And when you're not able to breathe out, then your air gets trapped into your, your airway and it dilates your airway. Dilates your airway, expands your airway. What does that do to compliance? Doesn't that increase compliance? So I'll say air can't get out. Increase compliance. And if air is trapping your, trapped in your lungs and expands it and you can't recoil it, you cannot recoil it, what does that do to your elasticity? It decreases it, decrease elasticity. When air is trapped in your lungs, air is trapped in your lungs, then you have extra air in your alveoli. You have extra reserve volume, extra reserve volume. You have extra reserve volume. What does that do? What does that do? If you have extra reserve volume, then there, therefore, like, therefore, kind of by proxy, you have to have total, increased total lung capacity. There's more air in your lungs, yeah? Is that a good thing? There's more air in your lungs, yeah, but you can't exhale. You can't breathe out waste products. So 
don't think it's a good thing. We're talking about lung pathology here, right? So don't think it's a good thing. So that's the first part of it. Is that right? Increased residual volume. And then therefore increased total lung capacity. Um, so that's the first group of lung diseases. You can also have what we call restrictive. Restrictive. And restrictive is due to stiffening. Stiffening of your respiratory system. Stiffening. And when it's stiffened, you'll take air in, but it can't expand. It can't expand because it's stiff. It cannot expand. What does that do to compliance? It decreases compliance. However, because it's stiff, because it's stiff, it can collapse. It can recoil still. So you can have increased elasticity. Increased elasticity. All right. Uh, I have a prop. The easiest way I remember the two is that I think of obstructive lung diseases as your alveoli are now a paper bag. Yeah, they can fill up with air. They can fill up with air, but it's very hard to get the air out. Very hard to get the air out. So they can fill up, fill up with air. That's the compliance part, but they can't get the air out. Decreased elasticity. The way I think of restrictive lung disease is I think of a corset. I think of a corset. And so it's very, very stiff. You'll take a deep breath in, but you won't be able to expand. You take a deep breath in, but it doesn't really expand. You have decreased compliance. However, can you take a deep breath out? Yeah, because you have a corset. You have like an extra helper, right? Take a deep breath out. You have a corset kind of pushing against you. Increase elasticity. So, all right, obstructive equals paper bag or a plastic bag. Restrictive equals corset. And if you can kind of keep those visuals in your mind, I think it'll help you moving forward. All right. So these are lung diseases, and we said these affect the measurements of your your lung health. Why wouldn't it? So it affects the measurement of your lung health. We'll look at this first. In uh, restrictive lung disease, you can't get as much oxygen in, so your measurements will be lower. You'll have less volume in restrictive lung diseases. In obstructive lung diseases, we said um, air gets trapped and you actually have more air in your lungs, so the values will be higher because you have more air in your lungs. There's more volume. How does it affect there? This is our normal graph. In restrictive lung disease we said that you can't really get air in so you take so you say take a deep breath in and it's much reduced but you say take a deep breath out and they can yeah it's like a corset right they can't take a deep breath in but they can take you take a deep breath out so they'll take a deep breath out and it'll look similar look kind of similar all right because they're still able to do that sometimes they are able to do that a little too well and their fe and their f VC to FE B1 ratio is more than 0.8 because they have that extra helper, that corset to take an extra deep breath out. Let's look at obstructive. We said an obstructive, you can take a deep breath in. So it looks pretty similar. But can you breathe out? No, there's an obstruction. That's why I call it obstructive. You can't get that air out. So it will look much reduced. It'll look kind of like that looks kind of like that a better picture will be in my notes but um i just wanted to go through it here so that when you look at the picture you kind of understand where it's coming from you understand where it's coming from all right i think this does it for this video um in our next video we're going to start talking about obstructive and restrictive lung diseases hope you enjoyed thanks